It wasn't because Brother Pete was just Pat was had the service last night, or Brother Rhodes was over there, or I was over there, or we were doing something wrong. That's not it. It's what God wants. It's the way God was moving. Amen. And brother, as you saw the results of it, the end, it turned out to be a beautiful service. I saw some things. Touched my heart. Changed me last night. Something changed in my life last night because I was in a service. But there were people sitting right here. I love them. God help them. I love them. That were being critical. And that's, well, that's not. If Brother Marlowe was here, it wouldn't be that way. How do you know it wouldn't be? How do you know? How can you say that? See, I never understood that either. Uh, uh, I know one thing. My wife sang that song about the potter and the clay. Oh, yeah. We sang that same song Thursday night down in, in Port Charlotte. Sister, uh, what's her name? Charlotte. Sister Charlotte. Charlotte, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. She sang it. She sings different. My wife, and I didn't sound the same. She plays the piano a little bit different. She got a different lift to her voice. It came across a little bit different, but it still blessed me. That's, her, that's his daughter-in-law, right? right? Son's wife. Yeah, I don't know all that stuff. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> last night my wife sang it. All together different. Didn't oh, sound quite the same. But it was still God. Yeah. It was God using that festival in Port Charlotte. It was God using my wife up here. It blessed my soul. Not because she's my wife, but because she was doing something that... I could see that God was on us. I could see the Spirit of God. I could feel it. And that's why it blessed people. And then, little by little, Matthew, got all, everything happened. Y'all remember? Yeah. At least I remember. I hope you remember. Uh, because this next service that we had, that we're going to have, it could be this service right here. You don't have one service and then there's a break. And then you have another service that's totally different. God works. They tie together. There's unity in God. God is unity. There's no division in God. No division in Christ. No division in the Spirit of God. Leave one service. Oh, yeah, we get tired physically. So we go home. We lay our weary bodies down. We drink a Pepsi. Sleep a little bit. And then we get up do a little bit of work, then Wednesday night we show up back here. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you're spiritual minded, you'll see where that service ended and it goes right on, flows into the other. It's just like a river Amen. flowing. You've got water running down a river bed. You don't walk down that and watch the water go by and here goes the water and then there's a gap of 75 yards and there ain't no water. You don't do that. That ain't the way a river runs. It's all connected. It's one stream. The Spirit of God flows, and it always flows. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the Spirit of God to flow from service to service, from out to out. I love y'all. I know I'm different. I know I sound different. I act different. But I love God with all my heart. I love it. I ain't got nothing in this life. I don't want nothing in this life. Not that, not that I'm not a... I've had cars, I've had this, I've had homes, all this stuff. It's not that I just throw them away, nothing like that. Uh, I found out after I got saved but that if I stayed in the will of God, I'd probably maintain and keep a lot of things that I got. But if I get out of the will of God, it ain't no telling what will happen to me. You hear me? You don't know what's going to happen to you. Do you think that man out there in the street that some say, the ungodly man out there in the street that's, un, that's not saved, do you think he knows what's going to happen to him next? No. Well, I'm going to tell you all something. I know what's going to happen to me next. The Lord is going to bless me. The Lord is going to keep me. I'm going to show up in church. I'm going to worship. I'm going to pray. And if God wills, I'll go to Port Charlotte Thursday night. And if God wills after that, I'll go back down there Saturday and clean the building. And if I if, uh, mow the grass, get it all ready for next week's service, if God wills. Uh -huh. But if God don't will, do you think I'm going? No. Nope. So I believe that God is gathering together right now. Oh, yes. I believe he's got vessels. I believe we call them lively stones. I believe he's working on those stones. I believe he's taking all the rough edges off. 
There's a place already made for you, Sister Ann. It has dimensions. It has dimensions. God knows just how he wants that. That vessel. That stone. He wants to slide it right into the wall of that great city that's going to come down from God out of heaven. Read about it in Revelation, the 21st, 22nd chapter. Amen. 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 See, when he got me, I was a... I never considered myself a stone for a long time because I didn't know that scripture. I didn't understand it. I thought I was a, a, a board, a one to six or something like that. Probably wasn't pressure treated either. Uh, I was probably had knot holes and I probably had worms and stuff like that in me. Two nights have been eating on me. They split in it. But God took it, brought it in, said, I'm going to use this piece of wood. So he knew just how to cut it off. He knew how to shape it. He knew what he was going to use it for. I didn't know. Had no idea. I came in the church, this building, I came in this building and when I was 37 years old. I'm 73 now. Uh, I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. Until I began to, when I received the Holy Ghost, I began to sit down and listen. And I got fat. Didn't gain a pound in weight. As far as I had to walk, but I got fat. I got faithful. I got a attentive. I got teachable. Yes, Lord. I'll listen, Lord. I got fat. And I've been getting fatter ever since. And they, somebody used something about that a couple, three weeks ago. About being fat and something. I can't remember. But uh, I began to grow. And God began to change my life. He began to take things away from me and began to add things to me. It's not always taken away. It's God adds to you as he <laughs> takes away. And because uh, he knows just how he wants you and how he's going to use you. Well, I wait, I said me three years old. I've been here for what, what does that make? 35 years, 30-something 30, 30 by years. And all, we go down to Port Charlotte one night. First time we ever had a service. Had it in a dog pound. It stunk like dogs. Oh, Lord, I had a hard time. <laughs> they groomed dogs. Their dogs were barking in the back. There was about 15 of us went down there. There was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think about eight, nine people from Port Charlie. I didn't even know what, who they were or anything else. Never heard of them. Never heard of Connelly's and all that bunch. But there we were. And I was praying. I said, Lord, help me to keep my spirit because I'm around dogs. So he did. Simple as that. I don't hate dogs. I don't dislike dogs. But I'd rather somebody else have them than me. That's all it. Uh, little did I know that night why I was there. I went down there to worship and to praise God with those with the people when my pastor, I went down to hold my pastor's hands up. And in my mind, if any one of y'all had been there, Hank was there, you would have said, here's what you would have said. If you had been sitting here in this church for as long as we had, well, I'm going to go down and support my pastor. I'm going to get behind him. Whatever he does, I'm going to get behind him. See? We've been taught. We're not a bunch of dummies. And uh, so that's what I went for. Well, we had a, we got it all, we had to set the thing. I had to move the dogs, had to move the furniture around, had to get this out of the way and finally get a few chairs to sit on. And uh, the building was from here to Brother Steve right there. That's as far as the building went. That's as wide as it was. It was real long, but we couldn't use that in. We couldn't use that to use this little area in a minute. So we had 
a row of chairs up here, and then we had about 20 foot, and then we had two real rows of chairs. And they were all filled up. And they began to play music and sing, and we had a wonderful song service. And so, I guess we sang three or four songs. You could feel the Spirit of God in Any time that you praise God, pray, God inhabits what? The praise of His people. So if you really praise, do you believe God's there? Oh, my Lord. How simple can you be? See, God inhabits the praise of His people. So we praise, really earnestly praise. I don't mean you have to physically. I think you should. That's just me. I don't think you ought to step there like a stump on a log. I think it's something moving in you, right. you'll move. Amen. And uh, I said that because Bo Marlow said that. I, didn't, I wouldn't say it. If my pastor hadn't said that, I would never say that. Uh, so the Spirit of God was there, and you could feel it. And the song service was over, and we were praising the Lord. It went on for about five minutes. And Brother George McCant was there from Arlington, Texas. And he's a firecracker. And uh, he's 85 something years old. And uh, he was going at it. His wife was there too. And um, finally it began to die down. And I said to myself, well, surely Brother Marlon, since he's the one that this is our first meeting, and he's the pastor of the church in Braden, and the majority of the people here from Braden, he would surely get up and open the service and uh, welcome everybody and and uh, take care of things, you know. So he was sitting right here beside me and I was sitting here. And his Bible was on the seat. So when he started to sit down, he reached out and got it. And his finger went, he, he picked it up in the Bible. I didn't notice it, but there was a piece of paper sticking there. He put his finger right in there and he stood up, I mean, he sat down. And I said, well, surely you'll get up. And the next thing I knew, I heard my voice. And I was talking. And I was standing up. And I began to preach. And the Spirit of God began to move on me. It just, that's just the way it was. I did listen to me. I had no conscious thought of getting up. I didn't even know that I was up. I didn't. It, was, it just happened. It was God. And God can do anything he wants to do. That's what he did that night. I stayed on my feet about 15 minutes. There was a young lady named Ashley there, and all of a sudden she began to cry. The next thing I knew, the sisters were gathered around him, Sister Marlowe, and the other sisters were gathered around her, began to pray for him, and she got the Holy Ghost. Just like that, right out of the box, 20 or 30 minutes into the service. So I was kind of standing back. I was praising, praying, praying, and praising God. Brother Marl was over here, and I, I moved over about 15 feet. And uh, he was looking that way, and I was looking that way. Well, you know, you got something in your, in your eyes called peripheral vision. It means you can see sideways, and not, while you're looking forward, you can see what's happening over here. And uh, I, I saw him, and he began to move toward me. Brother Marl is a, is a good man. I love him with all my heart. Uh, he walked up and he got about three foot, foot from me and I was standing there just like I am, just like this. Just had standing there in place, had my hand down beside my side. He just walked up there and drew back like this and hit me. Bam! Hit me right in my chest. I don't mean he just, he hit me. I felt it. I'm a, Lord, what's happening? He said to me, he said, are you ready to come down here and work? And all I said, I said, I will work. That's been almost three years ago, and I'm still working. Have we got a thousand people? No. Have you got ten people? No. But we got people. Amen. We got the people that God wants. Amen. I learned a long time ago, you come in this building, and you're sitting up on that platform, and God don't, and there ain't but 12 people in here, and it should be 300. Don't let your mind start saying, I wonder where they're at. You're supposed to be here to worship God. You're not here to wonder where, where the people are. God, if God wants the people, he'll bring them. You can't do that. That's karma. That's like David numbering Israel when God told him not to. What are you going to do? 
You're going to spend the whole time that you're in here supposed to be worshiping God worried about the people that's not here? No. When you get through with it, and when you have prayer, that day when the pastor that when the pastor calls for prayer, you can get up and get down on your knees or stand up or sit or whatever you and pray for those people. Pray God bring them. But don't come in here and let that thing be the thought on your mind. Come in here and think about God. Think about Christ. Think about the Lord. Think about the Bible. Think about the Word of God. Get your mind into it. Don't let that mind, this mind here, which is carnal, the soul to understand, lead you around by the nose. Remember, he, the devil's always, like Brother Marlowe said, well, if you physically die, or you start to die, you feel like you're going on to heaven, remember there's one always reaching to trying to get you to pull you back. His name is Satan. His name is Devil. We know who he is. We know where he lives. And uh, I just, I just want to want you to know that uh, there's a question I asked Brother Hank today. Now y'all gonna think I'm crazy when I say this, but I'm gonna say it anyhow because I don't mind being. You know, people think I'm crazy. That's all right. Don't bother me. It just don't bother me. Because uh, I am a little loose. If you, if you want to know the facts, I really am. Uh, I said to Hank today, I said, uh, which Jesus are you serving, Hank? We're driving down the road. I said, which Jesus are you serving? Now, this is me. The Holy Ghost gave me this. this and it helps me. It might not help you all. It might not do nothing to you. Are you serving Jesus in heaven? The one that's in heaven? Are you serving Jesus that's on the earth? Is there a body called Christ on the earth? Is there a body called Christ who Christ is the head of? On this earth, a corporal body. Is there? There is. I come in here to worship Jesus. I come in here to worship Jesus. Third heaven. But I come in here to serve Jesus that's on the earth. Made up of his people. Made up of his spirit. Not no carnal bunch of people, but I'm talking about people that are born and born again, filled with the Spirit of God. We work together. Paul said right there to provoke under love. It takes work to do that. Right. We lift one another. We serve one another. We're serving Christ. If we don't serve one another, you'll never serve Christ. That's right. You don't like to worship me, but you're the work of Christ. That's right. But remember, he has a body. It's his body. He's the head of it. He knows everything about it. It moves when he wants it to move. Amen. It never That body does not move unless Christ tells it to move. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. So if you move out of, when Christ's not telling you to, yeah. be, careful. be careful. Be careful. Right. Yeah. Be careful. But he has grace. He has mercy. He has love beyond all that we can understand. He won't condemn you and beat you to death and throw you out in the yard or something like that. But he'll work with you. And how does he work with you? With other, the rest of the members of the body. They love you. They, some of them are teachers. So they teach. Some of them are pastors. They take care of you, comfort you. Some of them evangelize. They're evangelists. They try to lift your spirit. That's part of the body. That's the hand of the body that comforts that body, that helps that body. That's the body of Christ that it works with. Then that, that body is made up of many members, as I said before, and there's a lot of gifts in that body, gifts of healing. All kind of gifts. I can't, my mind just went. Uh, but that body's not helpless. All those gifts, or in the body of Christ, and Christ and God sent them there as it pleased Him. He'll use a gift of healing. He will use a, a person that has the gift of healing in their life. Now we don't see a lot of that right now. Y'all heard Brother Marlowe talk about that, have you not? Brother Marlowe said, "When the gift..."